Hello, and welcome to episode 2 of Fly Bench Friday here on the Ozark Fly Fishing Channel. Today we are going to be tying a fly pattern called the Crackleback Fly. And specifically in this video, the Blue Crackleback is a very popular fly pattern here down the Ozarks, especially at Bennett Springs State Park here in Missouri. This is a very versatile fly pattern that can be fished as a dry or a wet fly, and is a go-to among many fly anglers here throughout the Midwest. If you'd like to learn more about this fly, please click the link into the description down below to hop over to my website, OzarkFlyFishing.com. Let's get started. Materials for this fly, I'll be using a number six blonde Aberdeen Eagle Claw hook. I'm gonna make it more like a streamer than a dry fly. Medium holographic silver tinsel. some peacock hurl and some rusty colored hackle feathers and a blue sharpie this will come in for a specific reason for this fly I'll be using a black thread at least it looks black it's kinda hard to tell and we'll begin by tying our jam knot Go ahead and break or cut off the excess. I prefer cutting off myself. And we'll go down the shank of the hook a little bit. About right there. Then we'll take some peacock curl. Lay it on top of the hook. Do couple pinch wraps if you have to to try to get it stepped there and then tie it down going down the shank about right there and take scissors and cut off the excess on the front next we're going to take uh, some flash tinsel. Yeah, I'd say cut off roughly three inches. Should do it. And then just tie that on. Now for the hackle feather, you want to Make sure you get one to where the feather is not going to be too long. And I have work with some closer to the tip versus down here at the base. So clip off what you think is an appropriate amount. And you're going to take it and you're going to pull off the barbules roughly eighth inch or so off the quill. And give you something to tie with. Alrighty, you're going to take that, lay it on top of the hook, and tie it down as well. Then bring your thread back up the hook shank to the right there behind the eye, roughly. Now we're going to take our tinsel. If you have a rotary vise, this helps. And we're going to start wrapping around the hook. This holographic stuff is very flashy.
And I'm gonna go back and redo that part. I'm not happy with it. So one thing about fly tying is if you don't like how it looks, you can usually undo it until you get it right and you're satisfied with it. Alright, wrap to right there. Unwind some of the thread that built up. Then go around, get a couple wraps behind it, some in front, and trim it off. Now, here's where that Sharpie is going to come in handy. I said this was a blue crackle back, and so far, far one where the blue's coming from. Well, I do not have blue tinsel at the moment. So this is where you gotta get creative as a fly fisherman. And quite frankly, this blue Sharpie is doing just fine. Don't be too stingy to think outside the box and use unconventional means. And there you go. There's the blue tinsel. It's good to take the peacock curl, lay it over the back of the fly, wrap it over a couple times, snip off the excess. Now, for the final step, you can grab the quill. You can use hackle pliers if you want to, or just use your hand. You're going to start wrapping it down the hook shank. Roughly five or six wraps. Notice how the barbules are going towards the eye of the hook. Wrap, do a few wraps behind it. A couple in front. Snip it off. Alrighty. Any little excess barbules got caught under the eye by accident, we just trim off. Just tidy it all up a bit. Alright, then just do four or five whip finishes. Cut off the thread. For well, final step, I'm going to take some hard as nails, good old Sally Hansen, and just to give the threads a little bit of protection. Give that one little trim. And there you have it, folks. A Bennett Spring Blue Crackleback. Well, folks, I think that's going to wrap it up here for today. Thank you for joining me on another episode of Fly Bench Friday here at Ozark Fly Fishing. 
If you'd like to learn more about this fly, please click the link in the description down below and hop over to my website, ozarkflyfishing.com. I believe this is a very versatile fly that everyone should have in their fly box, at least one pattern. If you'd like to get materials for this fly, I would for this fly, I would suggest that you'd visit your local fly shops and they could always use extra support. So anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, click that bell notification and all that jazz to stay tuned for future videos. We'll see you next time.